everyone. So uh, welcome to this session. The session is a poem. We are discussing poem in a challenging clinical scenario. So uh, I'm the moderator of Haru Inoue that from uh, Digestive Diseases Center, so a university, Koto Toys Hospital. And the, uh, we have uh, two uh, great discussions, uh, Dr. Uh, Bianca uh, Corosso uh, from uh, Italy. So uh, she is now working at the uh, uh, Mealy Hospital, uh, Bari, South Italy. And also we have uh, Yus Dr. Yusuke Fujiyoshi uh, uh, from uh, St. Michael Hospital, Toronto. Uh, okay, so uh, we'd like to introduce the first speaker. So uh, first speaker is uh, uh, Tassos Manuakis. Uh, he is uh, talking about, it's a very exciting title. So poem and other uh, treatment modalities for post COVID-19 dysphagia. So Tassos, please. Thank you very much, Professor Inoue, for giving me the opportunity to present such an interesting and novel topic. So can you see it in full screen, please, everybody? Yes. yes. Yes, okay, perfect. So we were only profoundly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, not just in Europe, but the rest of the world as well. Having said that, uh, COVID-19 was associated with a constellation of symptoms uh, some generic and common, such as fever, cough, or fatigue, and some rather specific, such as loss of taste and smell, some neurologic manifestations as well that were attributed to SARS-CoV-2 uh, induced thrombosis, autoimmune phenomena, or factory migration of the virus, and a rather neglected symptom, dysphagia, that was initially linked to incubation. However, we found out that even patients with mild symptoms or that were completely asymptomatic exhibited dysphagia as well. So we went on and formulated a cohort of 14 patients that we'd studied with EGD, sophagram, computed tomography, and HRM post COVID-19 infection. Interestingly, they uh, showed two clinical phenotypes, new onset dysphagia in eight patients, and an aggravation of pre-existing dysphagia for the rest, with an Eckhart score that climbed up all the way to eight from three. Also, two phenotypes based on high-resolution manometry, EGJ outflow obstruction, and type two achalasia. What is more interesting is that those patients with the new onset dysphagia all had EGJ outflow obstruction with an IRP4 of 17.4, whereas those with a worse and aggravated pre-existing dysphagia all had a phenotype of type 2 achalasia. So in terms of treatments, we actually had uh, nothing to do with the EGJ outflow obstruction cases as all of those showed a spontaneous resolution of symptoms or symptoms resolve just by prescribing PPI for a period of three to four months. Uh, this was not the case with a subpopulation with type two achalasia. They actually required endoscopic treatment at first in order to avoid overtreatment. We uh, applied pneumatic dilatation at 30 uh, millimeter, but this was, this was not effective. We had partial response and we had to escalate to a 35 millimeter balloon. And that's uh, when we decided to change our strategy and offer POEM as a first line therapy for this population. Two cases have been treated so far with POEM. There is uh, another one pending to receive treatment. We use standard uh, setting with ESG 300 Olympus uh, generator, of course, TTJ knife. And the other main difference is that we use preloaded rather large clips for the closure of the incision. So our results, poem in COVID-19 dysphagia, Eckhart score dropped from eight to one. This was rather remarkable. 
a lax EGJ that was not excessively loose endoscopically, uh, decrease in the esophageal caliber. And what I found to be really interesting was that the peristalsis recovered uh, at the two month follow up. So this is how it looked like in our first patient, a classical type two achalasia on our left. And this is how it looks like same patient after uh, POIL. This is quite remarkable. You can see that there is a very nice peristalsis. So special considerations in these patients, they should be eligible for anesthesia. Of course, we should not forget that the virus tends to induce pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, we got uh, bad bleeding with both cases, despite the fact that they were not under antiplatelate or anticoagulation use. This might be due to the fact that they were really fit, rather large, tall males with uh, large caliber vessels. And no need for a long myotomy, up to seven minute, uh, centimeters with two centimeters on the gastric side were enough. And in order to minimize any issues related to incision closure, we combined preloaded large and smaller uh, clips. So this is how it looked like, a very short uh, video, a rather large clip is closing. Incision, this is the first clip, this is a 20 millimeter clip. This is rather large, that as you will find out as well, this is from Microtech, it was really helpful because by just placing, this is the second clip coming down now, so, you know, just by placing three clips, we have a very good closure of our incision. So this is how it looks like after the third clip has been deployed. So in conclusion, we should be aware of a rather neglected manifestation of COVID-19, the post-COVID-19 dysphagia, which is linked to EGJ motility disorders either triggering new onset EGJ outflow obstruction that tends to resolve over time or fueling and aggravating a pre-existing dysphagia with a type 2 achalasia phenotype. And this is the one that we should be able to treat effectively, not with pneumatic dilatation because a 30 millimeter balloon is not effective, but just by choosing and applying POEM probably as a first line treatment for those eligible cases. So this is our university and affiliated hospital in the city of Larissa. This is a by night view with the ancient theater. Uh, this is the land of Hippocrates. This is the city Larissa where Hippocrates lived, worked and died. It offers fantastic views of Mount Olympus where the 12 Olympian gods reside. And at this point, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. So thank you, uh, thank you so much, Tassos. It's a great talk, and the uh, uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, lecture. And you mentioned that COVID nineteen dysphagia. So, Doctor Fuziosi, do you have any uh, question or comment? Uh, yes, I think that was a wonderful lecture. I think uh, previously some uh, study showed that like uh, virus infections such as uh, herpes simplex virus can be the cause of achalasia. So it's understandable that COVID-19 can be also the cause, uh, cause of uh, dysphagia and achalasia. So, but I have one question. I think recently uh, most of the healthy people have uh, getting vaccination. And I guess some of the patients who had who had treated uh, under you had also some vaccination. Do you have do you have any ideas about the relationship of vaccination and dysphagia or the occurrence of achalasia? Well, this is a fantastic question. Thank you very much for this. Um, actually, I had zero patients that had pre-existing dysphagia that got the vaccine, and then you could see that the dysphagia got worse. This did not happen. On the other hand, I distinctly remember a female um, in the late 40s, in her late 40s, I think, that after the second dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine, she developed dysphagia. And it was two to three weeks post the second jab of the vaccine. And uh, she had EGG outflow obstruction, manometrically, and that completely resolved 
within a six month period. Actually, it resolved something, I think, in the spectrum of three to four months. And this coincided with, uh, with the drop in the uh, antibody levels, the antibody titers against uh, the COVID that is induced uh, by the uh, jab. So I think that's why I strongly feel that this is an autoimmune manifestation. It is caused by the antibodies that are being developed and target the virus. And this is quite similar with what we show in uh, this case, in the case with the EGG atrophy obstruction post-vaccination. Okay, good. so thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, Bianca, do you have a, uh, any question or comment? Yes, thank you, Professor. Uh, first of all, congratulations for the presentation. Very interesting cases. And um, I was wondering, you showed us uh, the manometry pre and post poem, and that's very um, uh, interesting to see that Perisasis was completely restored. And also later on, you told us that the caliber also was decreased of the esophagus. Um, so um, it seems that if we catch uh, achalasia at early stages, uh, maybe we can um, give to the patient a better restoration of uh, the esophagus function. And so maybe also mm, the risk of a cancer later on and reflux, uh, or severe reflux disease. Um, what is your opinion about this? I think, I think that uh, this is very interesting and I totally agree with you. Um, it's just that we need long-term results when it comes to this. So it, I totally agree with you that it seems that if we offer our treatment early enough before we get a sigmoid, esophagus or sigmoid achalasia, then uh, some part of the peristalsis of the esophagus tends to come back. And if it is very early, I think as in these cases that we offer treatment quite early in the whole process, then it seems that they're almost 100% uh, back. So maybe I think we should focus our efforts and experiment on that, test on that, and see what is going on uh, in this field. This is very promising, if you ask me. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to ask uh, one more question to our uh, uh, Tassos. So um, um, uh, maybe you did the um, um, uh, literature survey. So uh, uh, could you have uh, uh, some report of uh, such kind of a uh, uh, esophageal motility disorders after COVID-19 infection? So there are a few reports, but they were mainly associated at the early stage of the pandemic with intubation. So there are only a very few reports on this kind of phenomena, mainly case reports, and none, I mean like zero with uh, manometry or esophagram. Uh, so this is actually the first report by our group in Tokyo Life uh, on this uh, subject. Okay, so thank you so much. So oh, thank uh, you. it's a very, very interesting uh, report. Thank you so much. So uh, we'd like to move on to the next speaker. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. China Rong. So uh, Dr. China Rong, he's an instructor of a minimally invasive surgery unit. So Department of Surgery of uh, Faculty of Medicine, Shiraji uh, Hospital, Mahido University, uh, Bangkok, Thailand. So uh, uh, Dr. China Rong, so please start your lecture. So he is talking about the sigmoid acaracia. Yes, a poem and an answer to it. So please. Thank you, Professor. Um, I'm starting to share my slide first. Okay, thank you very much for giving me a chance to talk about the Sigma Calasia. As you, as you see, uh, the defi definition of Sigma Calasia is uh, 
make the esophagus and full of the food in the esophagus that make the esophagus is tortuous and look like a sigma colon. When we look back to the natural history of the achalasia, first, when we, they start achalasia, the caliber of esophagus is not, not dilated or sometimes they have an abnormal contraction that make the, um, the patient have a chest pain. And after several months, two years, the um, esophagus become more dilation and pack of the food. And if they're not treated for many, many years, the esophagus become a tortuous and look like a sigmoid. Say we call this sigmoid esophagus. From Japan Esophageal Society, they say that if we call the sigma esophagus, that means the angle of esophagus is more than, uh, is, is less than 120 degrees. And the straight esophagus is more than 135 degrees. Uh, in 2010, Professor Inoue uh, propose the subclassification of the sigma achalasia. That means the level in one level in CT scan. If we see one lumen, we call this uh, subtype S1. And if we see the two lumen, we call the subtype S2. That this have to divide it into subtype because of the result of the treatment. In the past, if we have a sigma achalasia, we have only two choice. First is the in the early stage, we can treat with halomyotomy with uh, without reconstruction. But if you do more, like uh, do the uh, cutting of esophagus, maybe they have a lot of complication also. Or if we don't do anything, we just going directly to the esophagectomy, which have a lot of morbidity and mortality. After uh, introduced poem in, in the world, uh, report in 2010, Professor Inouye said that poem can treat uh, sigmoid achalasias uh, perfectly. And there's a lot of paper after that. This series report that 22 sigma cases after treatment, the uh, clinical is good and the uh, direction of the esophagus is more straight. Like uh, in this, the same paper, the gas score becoming from T4.9 uh, to 0 0.4. And the angulation is up from 88 degree to 109 degree. And the same result as the, um, this paper from Korean. They say that the esophagus after treatment, after we release the obstruction, the esophagus more come more straight. But not every case we can do that. This paper come from Indian group. They say that after treatment, uh, before treatment is picture A, and after treatment one year is picture B. You can see that the esophagus is look very good after treatment, but after four, uh, three and four years in the picture C and D, they become worsened down. The ankle will very narrow, narrow down. They say that because of uh, the the relief symptom because of the in incomplete myotomy. What is telling the incomplete myotomy is the learning curve of endoscopies. Maybe they have a short, um, maybe they're still in the learning curve that, or because of the infection inflammation, there's a lot of fibrosis between uh, in the esophagus or the progression of disease then become Person down. But sometimes they're coming back with the dysphagia because of the GERD, because of the reflux symptoms. So 
the uh, the symptom is mimic like uh, dysphagia again. In this case, if you document that it may be good, maybe we can treat with the medication and the clinical symptoms will be improved. How, to, how we get the, it, how we get rid of the inadequate myotomy. This paper said that if you don't know that it's enough or not to, get, to do the myotomy, uh, we, maybe we use the nasal scope going down into the natural lumen and um, turn it up and see the light in the mucosal tunnel. If we going down below the EG junction is enough to, to do the myotomy or make the tunnel is enough. Or maybe if you don't have a nasal scope, maybe we use the fluoroscope in street to get along. Because of in sigma achalasia, we can get lost very easy in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Um, this proposed from Indian group also, they say that if the sigma echalasia still limit in 90 to 135 degree, after treatment, they always develop uh, stress, more stress esophagus. But in the case of the, the esophagus is less than 90 degree, there's a not so good result after poem. So there, they have uh, many papers discuss about the new technique. This paper coming from Stephen, they said uh, uh, he said that uh, when we go in, uh, to the tunnel and when we see in the tunnel is high steep curve. Because of the tortious esophagus, we have to cut it. And the result will be better than you do only poem in the EG junction. That because you can uh, cut the curve that go very stiff, the food can go in through the EG junction very easily after cut that. Or they say that if they have a lot of uh, fibrosis, maybe this paper is very challenging and, and I'm not sure that I can do this. They open the mucosa and the muscle directly at EG junction and after that, they close the EG junction here. That might challenge a lot in this paper. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm would like to propose, to propose that OM is the effective and safe therapeutic modality for treatment of sigmoid type achalasia. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. China Ron, it's a great talk. And the, uh, any question from the question and the comments are from uh, first the uh, uh, Bianca, please. Yes, congratulations for your presentation, first of all. And then um, um, after, uh, I mean, which is your experience? Uh, of course, um, sigmoid esophagus is, is feasible, is effective, but it's still a challenge for all the endoscopies um, performing POEM. Um, so how many POEM do you recommend before uh, starting a sigmoid uh, esophagus and which is your experience um, in, this, um, in this file? After how many POEM did you found the courage to, to, um, to start um, a sigmoid type? Uh -huh. Thank you very much for the question. Actually, there have no data now today in the paper that show that how many cases we can start sigmoid poem. But in my experience, I think about 30 cases because of, uh, in my experience, in my personal experience, I can do poem with confidence after 10 cases. And then after 30 cases, 
we experience a lot of complication and <laughs> we <laughs> then we after 30 cases i'm quite sure huh? i have confidence to control everything so i think 30 cases may is uh, suitable for starting sigma calcium mm -hmm. thank you so dr fujiyoshi any question or comment are muted sorry yeah about the last uh, bianca's question I think uh, recently we analyzed our data in Showa University about the learning curve for poem. Actually, that data also showed that 20 to 40 cases are the plateau for the straight uh, type of Asia. So I think the number that you said 30 uh, to start the sigmoid cases is really appropriate for in terms of the data as well. So for my question, I think uh, for the completely end stage and mega esophagus acalasia can be treated as esophagectomy as well. So your presentation uh, showed that the poem has a good uh, results, uh, good outcomes for uh, the uh, sigmoid acalasia as well. So I, I think you're a surgeon. So what do you think yeah. about the indication for the esophagectomy? Uh, for the sigmoid cases. Now today, I think esophagectomy is the last choice for treatment of calasia because of um, because of its co complication. Morbidity is very high. So and mostly, if they do perfectly, the quality of life is not so good at all. So we try a lot to treat with other modality. And the indication for a subject of me maybe might be if you do all the modality in your experience and cannot overcome the, the result of treatment or after treatment, they have um, it's of, uh, it's of a a stricter esophagus, maybe they have to go straight for esophagectomy. Uh, professor muted, right? So thank you so much. And the uh, Dr. Tassos and the minorities, do you have any uh, comments? I would agree that this is the last resort, esophagectomy. Uh, our patients will not be happy. They will not have a good quality of life. And if we can avoid it, by all means, we should try whatever we have in our armamentarium. So in terms of efficacy, we know that poem is, is, is effective. And if perhaps we apply some modifications per case, then it fits even the most demanding, I think, uh, scenarios. So it's easily applicable in any case scenario, we should bear that in mind. And with one exception, perhaps, uh, that would be esophageal cancer, especially if it is advanced in a missed case, long-standing achalasia type one, we do not have the screening process as in Japan or other Asian countries. So something might be missed. So I think this is a good take home message as well. We should not neglect that after performing our point, we, we do not forget our patient. He, should, he or her should come back on an annual basis in order to get the surveillance uh, for cancer. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. So uh, today we have a very good uh, discussion of the POEM procedure. So first, the uh, uh, Dr. Tassos Manorakis, he uh, uh, introduced us his a very uh, special experience and, and, and exceptional experience of a post uh, COVID-19 dysphagia and uh, treated by the uh, poem. So uh, it's a, thank you so much. I ne never knew that. So uh, it's a very good opportunity to run from you. And the uh, second, so uh, Dr. Uh, China Rong talked about uh, how to manage the sigmoid 
uh, curvature. And actually, he uh, show us a very, very advanced uh, sigmoid curvature. That is, a, uh, in other words, terminal curvature. So as uh, everybody uh, in this uh, panel uh, mentioned that the uh, uh, sphagectomy is the last choice. So uh, sphagectomy of the mega, mega esophagus is not so easy. And the anastomosis uh, becomes a very high position. So uh, we can do sphagectomy safely, but so invasive treatment for the patient so it should be last choice. So uh, our recommendation uh, for the treatment of uh, advanced, advanced sigmoid is here. It's a first choice is a poem, I think, still poem. And the one time, and the, so half of the case uh, effective. So getting better after uh, poem. So it's a, like a type one acaracea, just cutting the ear. Uh, uh, distal end. And also, uh, if uh, uh, so, during endoscopy, we can find a lumen occlusive uh, curving. Uh, it's a good idea to perform the uh, curve myotomy. So, it's uh, reported by Dr. Stefan Zibald. Mm. So, anyway, anyway, so try porn first, and then if uh, it's uh, uh, no improvement of the symptom of dysphagia, so at the time uh, we discuss with the patient last choice of uh, esphagectomy. So, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Um, so, uh, today we have uh, so this uh, Zoom conference is uh, Europe and uh, uh, North America and Asia, wow, <laughs> it's a small world. So thank you so much, uh, this is a great session. So uh, all the panelists, I really appreciate uh, uh, this uh, great uh, discussion session. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for pleasure this. and honor. Thank you.